Good morning, everyone. How you doing? <laughs> because they can edit that out. You know, they can, they can, and then they can stitch it together. Um, okay, so that's yesterday's media moment. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't there, but I hope you learned that, that little um, brief message. So I'm Jim Clark. I'm the current president of the board of directors um, for another 24 hours or so. And, and I'm here to welcome you and thank you for participating in the network and being part of California Relief. You know, our, our mission has the words empower grassroots efforts and build strategic partnerships. And, uh, and, and I, we, we try to meet that mission every day in what we do and things you'll hear about from uh, staff and our strategic partners um, are, are going to reflect that today. So I'm, I've been a board member for five years. Yeah, I have uh, my, 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 I couldn't say no. That's how I got on the board. Uh, Martha Ozanoff, who was the executive director at the time, uh, asked me if I would be on the board and I had, I had pushed her off a couple of years and then finally, you know, I can't, couldn't really say no to, Mar to Martha. And Rose Epperson was joining the board at the same time, so she said something along the lines of, you know, if you, if you become a board member, I'll become a board member, and I can't really ever say no to Rose. So that, that's originally how I, I um, got on the board. My, my interaction with California Relief goes back to the mid-90s, um, when, uh, when California Relief was a program of the Trust for Public Land. And I had a project that uh, California Relief was a cooperator um, on uh, developing a model of urban forest sustainability. And that model has had its ups and downs over the past 20 years, but is headed back up because the Forest Services uh, and the Davy Institute are putting together a um, urban forest sustainability workbook um, as, we, as we speak. Now in that, in my five years, I've, we've had four executive directors Martha like resigned the first meeting that I attended, which was, should, have, should have sent a message, but I, I didn't. We've had uh, several board members become employees. We've had um, some uh, low times in terms of our statewide funding, and then we've had some of the most exciting things in terms of partnerships and activities that have happened uh, to California Relief in its 25-year history. Oh, and last year we celebrated our 25th anniversary and we had an anniversary party. And it was, uh, I got to meet the founding founder, founder, Isabel Wade, uh, who, who most people agree um, was the founder, the I, person who put California Relief together. And I think Rick Matthews was an original member of that founding group. Is that not correct? Okay, so I was wrong. <laughs> you know, another thing about the media is if they ask you a question that you say no, just say no, and then they can edit that out later. <laughs> it's okay. Cindy called me this week and asked if I could talk to a, a, a station about the drought, and they wanted someone, a dirty arborist who could be very dramatic. <laughs> Fortunately, I couldn't meet their schedule. So that's, that's my background with, uh, with California Relief, and again, I want to welcome you. Now, so today I'd like to ask our board members that are present to stand up and introduce themselves and tell us what they do and how long they've been involved with uh, California Relief. And I see two of our board members sitting right there. So, Haiti. I'm Haiti Danielson. I have been involved. I was involved with California Relief. Oh, excuse me. You have to use the mic because we're going to, we, we'll provide you with the mic. I'm Haiti Danielson. I don't know if this is on, but maybe it feeds into the camera. Um, I'm Haiti Danielson. I was involved with California Relief in the mid-90s as well. I was on the board when Genevieve Cross was the executive director. And then I sort of fell away from California Relief, but have been on the board again now for a year. And very happy to be working with Cindy and the staff and, and all the wonderful board members. I am the owner, co-owner of a large tree nursery called Bothing Treeland Farms that uh, has wholesale tree nurseries up and down the state of California. 
and uh, my parents started that nursery 62 years ago, so I, uh, I am a tree person. Thanks, Heidi. I'm Catherine Martineau, and I am uh, on the board, have been on the board for three years. I am the executive director of Canopy, and as such, I've been a, a member, and Canopy has been a member of California Relief ever since Canopy was founded, and Canopy is in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're based in Palo Alto, and I'm the treasurer um, for Relief as well. Here comes Rose. I'm Rose Epperson. I am the executive director for the Western chapter of ISA. But I also have a um, association management company that manages four other associations in the green industry, uh, both in Cali uh, LA, California, and uh, globally with the Society of Commercial Arboriculture. I've been uh, tag teaming with Jim on California Relief's board since I think 2008, 2006. I don't remember, I'll, uh, quite some time. And both of us, when we came to California Relief's board, we, we wondered why do they, we're not, we're not in the sector of the, of the grassroots. What, what do they want us, what can we provide? And I have to say, for both of us, and, and I think I speak for both of us, it's been a really rewarding experience. We've, we've learned so much about your world, and I think it helps us do a better job at our job, plus create a better California. So I'm happy to be here, and uh, I'm a past president and just, Love hanging out, so there you go. <laughs> I don't know if you have any other boards. Uh, Matt Ritter from Cal Poly is supposed to be here, but I don't see him in the audience yet, and so uh, he'll, he will arrive later today. You know, he comes in, you know, being carried by Cal Poly students and one of those, like, things, those, uh, <laughs> what is the word for that, Cindy? Rickshaw. No. Rick, like, uh, the rickshaw, they pull him in. Uh, then also uh, not with us today are Ruben Green, uh, Tracy Lesperance, um, Desiree Bachman, and uh, th they're not able to be, oh, and, and Ray Trethaway um, from Sacramento Tree Foundation. So now I'd like to, uh, we have uh, Cindy, you've met, our new executive director has been with California Relief for less than a year, started last October. So I'd like to uh, introduce her and the rest of our staff. So. Chuck Mills is, uh, now I don't remember where Chuck Mills is. Chuck, please stand up, Chuck. And Amelia, uh, yeah, mm -hmm, Amelia. And Melissa Gutierrez is our newest staff member. For those of you that are speakers, Melissa has the green cards that say 10 minutes, five minutes, and one minute. And we couldn't really, it, it's, a, it's surprising the, the amount of things that we get done with uh, four staff members. As Cindy has remarked to me um, during her time, her brief time as executive director, we have a small staff. <laughs> we have a very small staff. And, uh, and I, you know, I, what can I say to that? The answer is yes, we have a small staff and uh, we have a really high quality good staff. And uh, under her leadership, I'm sure that in a couple of years we'll have more than four people to introduce and we'll have uh, a larger staff. I have, I have no doubt about that. Um, also with us is one of our most important strategic partners, John Melvin from uh, CAL FIRE. I, 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 probably CAL FIRE is our most important strategic uh, partner since they, they provide us with a tremendous amount of funding and they contract with California Relief to be the volunteer coordinator for the state's urban and community forestry uh, program. So, John, you have some colleagues with you. I, I do. Why did you go to the, the <laughs> So, here's another media tip. When they ask you to speak into the microphone, speak into the microphone. You know, you don't always, we don't always get to make the rules. Sometimes they get to make the rules. I have uh, three of our staff here today. Uh, we have a total of six regional urban foresters. I also have our newest urban forester with us today. Uh, the other three happen to be on wildfire assignments right now. So I have Lynette Short from the San Diego Orange Imperial area. I have Abigail Schrader here from the Inland Empire. And our newest urban forester, David Haas for LA Ventura. Uh, he started two weeks ago. So make sure you introduce yourself to David. It's been a two year uh, slog to be able to hire somebody, so we're really excited to have David. 
And, you know, thank you so much for what you're all doing. What we do doesn't matter if you're not doing good work out there on the ground at the grassroots level, so keep it up. Thank you, John. I would take more time, but Cindy told me I can't. <laughs> Melissa's going to give us the sign that says you have one minute left. So with that, I'd like to turn the program back over to our executive director, Cindy Blaine, and uh, she'll uh, discuss, uh, I'm sure she's going to introduce what we're doing today, and we'll get started with our formal program. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you to our partners and staff um, and board members for being here. Cindy? Thank you. Oh. Jim, Jim, just a minute, Jim. Could you come back here for a second? Um, Speak into the microphone. What Jim did, Jim talked about how there had been a lot of change in the last couple of years, and Jim has presided over that change to a large extent. He's been here through the executive director search, the onboarding, all the transitions, and he's leaving us. We, we tried to persuade him to stay, but we couldn't. So with his dedication, we, we wanted to leave him with a reminder of his great work for California Relief. Aww. And this is, and this is a, a, a great oak. And the picture says underneath it, you're a great oak, Jim. <laughs> and thank you all for all your great work for urban trees. So thank you very much, Jim. Oh, we have to do a camera. This is called a grit and grin. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being a good sport. When Jim mentioned grip and grin, all I could think about was a, a <clears throat> legislative policy term that Chuck had mentioned recently, which was gut and amend. I'm thinking, wait a minute, what are we doing up here? <laughs> so, okay. Thank you very much for being here. As we have talked about a lot, and I have been getting onboarded and, and cult acculturated by the staff, especially having two board members. Amelia has said to me, the network getting together is one of the most vital things about what we do because we can share what we know and what we've learned and how to do it. So your presence here is 80% uh, of what's going on here. We've got people presenting and then you're gonna take it in and sieve it through your brains and talk about how it works for you. So, um, and I want to say again thank you to the board because the board has been really wonderful with their advice, with their counsel, with their guidance in saying, Cindy, think about this, Cindy, do that, Cindy, don't worry about that, which always helps. And uh, it's been wonderful. A couple other thank yous really quickly. We have partners here in Riverside uh, in the Inland Empire who made it much easier for us to do this work. Besides, besides the University of California, Riverside, who did a great job, I want to thank Diana Ruiz from the Riverside Corona um, Resource Conservation District who helped us with the tables and the table decorations. And then we also have um, Nancy Sappington. Is Nancy here? There you are, Nancy. Nancy Sappington with the Inland uh, Urban Forest Council. And also Darlene DeMason, right here, who has been wonderful and helpful too with working with the, the university. Darlene was a botany professor here. So thank you very much for having all of uh, our partners here. And before I go any further, I have to say, we're a really small staff, you know? And, <laughs> and putting on a, a conference is a big deal. Last time I had to put one on, I was at the Tree Foundation and they had 23 people. So it's a little bit different. So I have to say, for my, small staff, mighty but powerful staff, and powerful, please give them another round of applause. Melissa, Amelia, and Chuck. Fantastic job. And Melissa hit the ground running in, in May and hasn't stopped yet as far as, okay, can you tweet that? Can you do that and put it up there? Chuck handled the tra uh, travel reservations so that we could get here, and Amelia did all the logistics. So thank her for having a comfortable, cool bed and even being here in, uh, in the Inland Empire. Amelia said, I think we should go to Riverside. And I'm going, really? <laughs> like, I'd never been to Riverside. You know? <laughs> it was a perfect decision. So a couple intro things, because I always like to know who's here. For how many of you is this your first time at a relief event? 
Seriously? Wow, I'm impressed. Well, thank you very much for coming for your first time. That was more than I expected, even after looking at the uh, list. Now I'm going to do a little geography. How many of you are Northern California? Wow, cool. How many of you are Central California? Oh, and then we have people like Leo, who's going through all the regions, yeah. <laughs> and then how many of you are Southern California? Yeah, that's why we're here, because you guys are here. So thank you very much. And um, I'm also, oh, before I, keep, before I launch into my kind of expectations and big picture stuff, I'm, I have a couple of reminders too. Um, we have the parking lot right here for if you have ideas, and we have little post-its you can also put up there. We're gonna have an open forum discussion at the, end of this, uh, at the end of the day. So if you think of something that you think is a burning issue that's not on the agenda, come write it down or put it on your sticky note and stick it to the parking lot and we'll talk about it. Um, oh, Amelia told me if anybody's parked in the 60 minute parking outside, that's a no-no. You don't wanna be there because they will ticket you. They're, they're quick to ticket. If you have a question about parking, see Amelia at the back in the turquoise or the teal. She can point you in the right direction. Oh. If you need internet, talk to Amelia about the Wi-Fi's. And then last and certainly not least, the coffee is coming at nine o'clock. You, you can hold on. You can hold on. So. Okay, what are you gonna do here today? I, I just wanna kinda set the, set the bar high. I, I want you to, we had the media training class yesterday. So that was looking at how do we talk to the media and we don't think about ourselves and as, as Bobby Pena said, you all are true believers, which is another way of saying, what do we say? Uh, die hard fanatics. And, um, and so you have to think about the issues from the perspective of who you're talking to. So I want you to think about a lot of things today from a different perspective. We've been tree people for a long time. I, I am always impressed with how long people have been in this business. But let's talk about how do we see this differently. And then leap outside your comfort zone. We did that yesterday at the Media Expectations when we called on Matt Van Donsel. Matt, you're the first one to get up there and be on camera and get recorded. And oh, there he is, he's smiling back there. See, it was a happy experience. <laughs> and, and everybody else who did that. And then reimagine your approach. Like I just said, some, have you, some of you have been doing this for a long time. And, and we're doing new grants now, we're doing new partnerships. How do you look at what you're doing and say, what if I just threw that out and do it a different way? Well, maybe you don't wanna do that. But how could you do this differently as we approach this new era called greenhouse gas reduction funding? As we're gonna talk more about that. And the other expectation, the underlying expectation, this is a leadership workshop, so why are you here? You, you'll see on the agenda an awful lot of stuff about communications because part of the thing about being a leader is you need to communicate. You can't just go off and, and dig a hole and, and plant a tree. You have to be talking about planting that tree and caring for that tree. So what we want you to do is, is think about how do you take what you learned today and then go talk to more people in your community and move on and, and, and make change? And how do you define things differently? It might mean a new role. It might not just be planting trees. It might be doing counseling, advising, things like that. And, and lastly, just let's ground ourselves. Why are we here? <clears throat> Why do we do work in the urban forest? Why do you care about trees? And is it just because you love trees? Yeah, you care about trees. We all care about trees. Is it because you love money and fame? No. <laughs> Um, you care about trees because of this. This is where people are, you care about community. You're doing this because you have a connection to trees and you also realize inherently in your gut how important trees are to your community. And that's what we want to fire up and have you talk, you know, we want you to get up there and talk to ABC with fire in your gut and dirt in your hands and that sort of thing and be passionate, so. Um, there is an awful lot happening right now in the urban forest world, and you know it. You know that everybody's now living in urban areas, that we're having awful extreme weather events and they're not gonna stop, starting with drought, and we can expect maybe El Nino rains, but not snowpack. Um, the research is just starting to burst with more stuff about trees and public health. The GIS tools are amazing. 
John Melvin has gotten us canopy cover data for the entire state. You know, things are really happening there. And not just in California with SB 535, but throughout the nation, there's a recognition of racial divide. That's also affecting us because we work in urban areas. And then last, well, not lastly, cap and trade funding is a big, big change. You all know it's the most significant funding we've ever gotten in California through California funding. Almost, but not quite bigger than the uh, US Forest Service funding. And then the fact that we're in California and we're lucky enough to have SB 535 helping to lead the way with this so that we can start addressing some of these issues that are affecting the entire country. We're ahead of the, we're ahead of the curve with SB 535. Um, so, you know, we have exciting things going on. And, and I started thinking, okay, well, you know, what do you say that? What do you say? Oh, that's a critical juncture. So I, I, then I did what I always do. I Googled critical juncture just to make sure I was using it right. And, and then I found these quotes. And it was like, whoa, these are, these are serious things. You know, events that disrupt the existing political and economic balance. It's certainly going to disrupt the economic balance at a lot of our nonprofits, right? It's, but it's also going to disrupt the balance at a lot of communities because we are now going to have funding for communities that did not get the funding in the past. And it also, when they do the study, that the choices we make now are really important as to what's going to happen at this particular point in time. How are we going to use all those things that are happening? How are we going to... Uh, modify what we do because of climate change? How are we going to modify what we do because of the GIS that Colleen's going to talk to us about, or the, the carbon sequestration? I also think of GIS. What are we going to do differently? Um, the racial divide. These kind of pictures have been floating around the urban forest world for the past couple of years. And then with the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, this just brings it right home. West Oakland and Piedmont. Piedmont is three miles from West Oakland. Oh, I'm not reading my notes. Um, so, what this says is who should we be helping? Uh, who needs trees? Where, where are trees needed the most and how do we define community? Just, you know, true confessions. I worked at a nonprofit that was not California Relief before this and I won't name names, but I thought we were not unusual from other nonprofits that in a lot of, in a lot of cases, the, the people that we went out and worked with were the people that came to us. They were the neighborhood associations that came to us. They were the parks of people that came to us and said, we need trees. And because we were a small nonprofit, 25 people, big for some nonprofits, but we considered ourselves small. Because we were a small nonprofit and we had to do an awful lot and hit the ground running, that was the low hanging fruit. That were the people that you went out and worked with. And so how do we, say, okay, we can't just go talk to the, in many cases, middle class people who have the resources to know that we even exist and the time to come talk to us. We have to talk to everybody and we have to redefine community. Some of you have seen this study that came out, Dorsetta Taylor. I heard about it last year at the Partners Conference in, um, in Charlotte and it was, it was an eye opener. If you do nothing else, just read the executive summary. What it says is that environmental organizations, and that's us, for the last five decades have said that they needed to be more diverse and we have failed miserably. And they said very briefly, as far as hiring people into environmental positions, as far as gr bringing people in, a lot of times people just talk to the people they know. And that, who do you know? Another study that came out when everything was happening around the country with, with racial issues in Ferguson was a study that, that blew me away and it said, the article showed that Caucasian people mostly know Caucasian people. 91% of your, of your sphere of, of influence or your sphere of friends is Caucasian. People of color have way more diverse. For them, 66% is the same ethnic background as themselves. So that means they've got 38% that are, uh, that are 34% that are a different um, uh, community. So, what this means is we need to make new friends. And I'm not saying that some of us aren't already doing this. I think we are. I think we just need to, to really do a much better job and expand that. Um, and we already talked about that. This was some information that came to me in the course of the last year as we were learning about Cal Enviro Screen. And it's interesting. It says because the Cal Enviro Screen is what determines who gets the funding through the greenhouse gas reduction funds, it says that, okay, California overall, 
African-American population is 6.6%. Now, some colleagues of mine who are African-American say that this number is not necessarily correct because it's mixed with other races and that the numbers aren't necessarily um, that low, they might, that they're higher. That oftentimes Latinos and African-Americans get, get merged. Um, in the DACs, 8.2%. Of the, of the uh, census tracts that are DACs, the population is 8.2% African-American. Asian, you can see the numbers. The one that is most striking, of course, is Latino. Overall in California, Latino is, according to the 2010 census, 38% and it's 64% in the disadvantaged communities. And what does that say about when we're out there doing our communications with our media, with our talking to the communities? That means we have to be, um, we have to, to change how we talk to people. We have to change so that we are culturally competent, as we have talked about in some of our meetings before. And then finally what I would say is, this is a different slant, but our mission is the same. Our mission has always been to improve the community, build community by growing trees, and it's just our definition of community that has to be broadened, expanded, and become more inclusive. And as I said, some people are already doing it, and that's, that's what we've got. So, we have all this money coming into, into the urban forest world. What will success look like? This has been a discussion that we've been having with ARB, Air Resources Board, who's one of the people doing this. They, they're saying, if this money goes on for years, how, you know, what's this gonna look like? Well, our trees will survive and grow very big so that they can give the benefits to the communities. The communities will bond, hopefully, with the help of these trees. We talk about trees and social cohesion and care more, not only about their trees, but about their community. Uh, neighborhoods will improve. Put any definition you want in there. What does improve mean? Is it public health? Is it social cohesion? Is it just feeling better? Jobs training and jobs will increase. And we always talk about the right tree in the right place, but it will be the right people in the right place for this. So. Okay. And the other thing I keep saying is this is a huge experiment. We have all this funding coming in. It's going to change the face of California, we believe, in urban forestry in our urban areas. Um, I was talking research to ARB, and they said, don't use the word research, talk about monitoring, because we're gonna, we're gonna track what we did. So, as Bernie Fisher, who's a professor at Indiana, uh, said, a lot of times we, what we track are outputs versus outcomes. So an output says you planted 1,000 trees and you had 3,000 community hours. Outcomes are how did it change the neighborhood? What did it do? What were the long-term results? So for us to do that, that means tracking and monitoring uh, uh, longer. Instead of just going to the next project, we have to keep track of this because this will also build up our evidence for why this is important work and what great stuff it does so that we can continue to get um, funding for trees and communities. Data, photos, stories and testimonials. Stories are really important based on what Bobby said. What else? So I should go back, but I won't. The thing is, is that that's where we stand right now. And we have people here to talk about these issues and to, so that we can all dive in and say, how do we look at what we do now through a new lens? How do we do it differently? How do we do it better? How do we do it bigger? So thank you very much for your help on all that. Before I go to logistics, is there any, are there any questions? Okay. Um, so, shifting gears completely. Contact information. We didn't ask you on our Eventbrite, but we should have. We just were new doing the, the Eventbrite. So the question is, is it okay with everybody here if we share your information, your contact information in a post follow-up? If anybody doesn't want us to do that, come talk to me and we will take your name off the list. But we've just put your names and your titles in the, in the agenda. We'd like to be able to share contact information because this is a community of, um, of excellence. Cell numbers and media. Ah, this comes from what Jim said about I was trying to find somebody to talk on ABC. I, I, I was desperately on the phone trying to find somebody in the Bay Area to talk to ABC the other day. So, so if you guys want to talk to, to media, Make sure that we all have your cell phone numbers because that's how they, they want it soon and they want it fast and we want people speaking for trees everywhere, any opportunity we have. Videos and sharing. You can see that we have a, an arrangement going on here with um, uh, UC Riverside. 
there's a, a form inside the packet to, for your release. If you have a problem with it, let us know, and we'll make sure that there's a black bar across your... No, we won't. <laughs> um, and then cell phones. This is where I give you mixed messages. We want your cell phones on mute, but we want you to use them. And, and that's because Twitter, we would like you... We have a hashtag. Melissa set up a hashtag for us. We want you to help us get out word about what you're learning and what your impressions are, et cetera. For those of you who are ISA certified, CEUs, will, the form will be out at 4.20, because that's how they tell us to do it. And yesterday, I forgot to have it out after Bobby's, so I have the form over here, and you can either grab it sooner, or it'll be out there at 4.20 as well. <laughs>